Welcome to the Press Box. I'm Mark Emerson and this is a new show covering North East football. As well as discussing the hot topics surrounding Sunderland and Newcastle United, we will also delve into the lower tiers in non-league corner, which is coming up later in the show. Joining me on the sofa today to summarise the action are North East sportswriters Ed Sires and Ben Spratt. We'll start with Sunderland. They got a great 3-1 win away from home at Crystal Palace last night with goals from Jordi Gomez and Stephen Fletcher. Ed, it was absolutely brilliant for Sunderland to get three points last night. Yeah, vital three points as well, I think, uh, given the morale. Uh, the morale in the team after the Southampton and Arsenal defeats must have been pretty low. And I think that makes the, uh, the win for Sunderland last night even more impressive. Um, you know, uh, it, good teams, ev every team in the world will have bad days. It's all about how you bounce back from them that I think is the uh, crucial thing. And I think Gus Poyer emphasised that after the Arsenal game. And uh, I think it was vital, not so much, not even for the league position, I thought it was vital just for the club to get back to winning ways after such a terrible couple of weeks. Ben, Sunderland have got Everton on Sunday. Do you think they can get any points from that game? Uh, it's, it's a tough game, but uh, Everton haven't been quite as good this season as they were last season. After an impressive away win, you'd also hope that they can bring that form back home, beat Everton away from home last season, so hopefully the stadium of light will be rocking on Sunday. Definitely, but you've got to look at the mistakes from people like Wes Brown and Minoni in recent weeks, despite Pantillamon's good performance last night, against players like especially Samuel Leto. You look at his class, his quality and experience, you've got to cut their mistakes out, don't you? And after the Arsenal game, Poy emphasised the fact that we need to cut those mistakes out because any team will struggle if you keep giving away goals like that. And I mean, Wes Brown, I think about the one last night, the one against uh, Arsenal where he passed it back to Alexis Sanchez. Um, He's an experienced guy. He's played for Man United all those years. Uh, England caps. There's no reason for him to be doing that. Um, so it's disappointing. I mean, it's such a good performance last night for Sunderland, but you've also got to take a step back and say, well, on another day, that own goal could have completely screwed us over. Patrick van Aanholt went off injured last night with a, a suspected dislocated shoulder. Unfortunately for Sunderland, he was looking very bright, wasn't he? He was. He's a player that's played for both North East clubs now and he'd, he was one of the few players perhaps who'd made a solid start to the season. He's Particularly last night he looked good again with Wilfred Zahar and it was a topic of whether Sunderland would struggle once he came off. Well, you know yourself, Ed, uh, Tom Robson, he's been doing quite well in the under-21s recently. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see him against Leicester at the Stadium of Light in the under-21s um, uh, last week and I thought he was very bright and he got forward well. Uh, he can cross the ball in and he gets to the byline. I think he's a very positive player. Do you think he could fill in for Van Hollnold? <sighs> it's, it, it's a difficult one. Sunderland are in a difficult position at the minute. Uh, is it the time to be bringing in young players? I don't know. He's, just, he wor he's worthy of a place on the bench, I would say. It's worth giving him a chance because as we've seen at Newcastle, um, bringing young players in can have such a positive effect on the team. Well, hopefully Sunderland can sort out their defensive problems and pick up a win in Everton. Newcastle continued their recent revival, beating Liverpool 1-0 at St James's Park. It was their third win in a week following victories over Spurs and Manchester City, and this eases the pressure on Alan Pardew. Ed, Newcastle, fantastic win again. They're doing, they're doing the business at the moment for Alan Pardew, aren't they? The players are getting right behind them. This one week for them, I think they've beaten Liverpool at home, they've beaten Man City away and Tottenham away. Uh, that on the back of the Leicester win as well. It just shows, again, against Leicester, when it was 1-0, um, on the back of some bad form, some uh, poisonous atmosphere as well. Uh, it just shows what three points can do with the team, lifts them. And um, Newcastle have shown countless times over the years that once they get a run together, they're a serious outfit. And Ben, they've got some brilliant players on the bench in Cabela and Revier. Cabela, World Cup player. Revier, top Monaco scorer. They must be wondering what on earth they can do getting the side against all these young talent. Well, yeah, that's they would have at the start of the season. They were getting in the team. They would have expected to still be in the team at this point, I imagine. But they they haven't taken their chances, and the young players that have come in very much have. So they can't really hope to get in the team unless they improve their performances. Definitely, in West Brom at the weekend again. West Brom side struggling a little bit of late. Do you think they can get another fifth fifth, in, fifth win in the row? Fifth win in the row. Yeah, I've actually been quite impressed with West Brom this year with Alan Irvine. I thought they would struggle more than they have. Um, so I don't think it'll be an easy game for Newcastle, but good run of form. It fans behind them now. Um, Pardew out brigade seem to have disappeared a little bit. So it's a better atmosphere around the club, and I think there's no reason why they can't go and get a win. And the cup form as well, beating Manchester City. We've, we've, we've got to say, it was a fantastic performance. And Can they go on and win the cup? Well, as long as they're in it, they've still got a chance, but uh, there's obviously Chelsea still in it, Southampton on a good run and Liverpool as well, so it's going to be tough, but if they put in more performances like they did against Manchester City, you'd like to think they've got a chance. In other cup news, 
Gateshead and Blythe Spartans both feature in this weekend's FA Cup first round. To discuss this further, we're going to head over to Non-League Corner with Matt Riggs and Luke Bidwell. Thanks, Matt. Welcome to the section of the show where we focus on the region's smaller clubs. Matt, Gateshead are away at Norton in the FA Cup this weekend. How do you assess the chances? Well, I think on paper it's a, it's a comfortable tie for Gateshead to go on and win. I think uh, you know they're in really good form in the league. Uh, they lost to Barnet the other day, but before that they were unbeaten in nine matches. And uh, you know, as I said on paper, it's comfortable. Norton are in the um, uh, the Northern League Division One South, and uh, for me, I think Gateshead should progress with ease. And after that, it's a case if they do progress, you know, there's a second round and possibly a third round looming, and um, you know, maybe a Premier League tie. And also, we were so close to getting an old North East tie as well, weren't we? Of course, yeah. They uh, Norton had to go through a replay to beat Shildon. Uh, they beat them 2-1 after the replay in the, in the fourth qualifying round, that was. and uh, It was 0-0 in the first leg. So, yeah, very, very close to getting an all North East tie, which would have, been, would have been good for the supporters, would have been a packed out stadium. But instead, you know, Gates will go down to Norton and, and be really confident in their chances. And Gates' manager, Gary Mills, has spoke recently about his side's failure in last year's competition. He said he wants to go one step further this time, but they might be without experienced striker John Shaw. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's their top scorer at the moment uh, with six goals, John Shaw. But they've got uh, goals in other areas of the team. You know, that's in second place and top scorer's only got six. So that, that proves that they can score in other areas. And, uh, you know, you mentioned about Gary Mills wanting to go further in the cup. That is there, obviously, it's an added bonus. But I think their concentration is going to be on the league this season. Obviously, they missed out in the playoffs last year. And they're in second place, so they're flying at the moment. And uh, I think the concentration will be on the league. One other thing Mills has talked about recently is his ability to rotate his squad this year. Last year he had one of the smallest budgets and the smallest squads in the conference. They did well, so they obviously bought players in like Alex Rodman from Grimsby. Uh, and do you think you'll possibly see some of these fringe players starting, making the case to be involved permanently in, in the first 11? Yeah, certainly, I think so. And, you know, that league is so tight at the moment. Uh, Gates are in second, but there's only six points from them down to 12th at the moment. So uh, I think the use of a big squad will be really important. I think uh, everyone will have to play their part if they're to you know keep that going in the league and progress in the cup. You know it's a lot of added games. They'll have Tuesday night games uh, frequently this season. So uh, you know those players will be very important. Another northeast team in the FA Cup first round this weekend are Blythe Spartans, who are at home to Conference side Altrincham in the first round. They've had quite a run so far, haven't they, Matt? <laughs> they have, yeah. I mean. They've had uh, four qualifiers all the way from home. Uh, and I was told this week that the last time that happened was in 77-78 when they got to the fifth round. So, you know, uh, there's, there's great history in the FA Cup there for, for Blythe. And this season, they're really, you know, looking good in that competition. They face Altrincham, though, conference side again. It's going to be really tough for them. I think uh, they might struggle, but, you know, any, anything can happen in this uh, competition. It's the magic of the FA Cup, you know. And, uh, you know, I think they'll be confident going into that match. And as Blythe know well, they've been there before, giant killers in the FA Cup themselves. Can you see them going beyond Altrincham? Certainly, you know, I think uh, their league form has really uh, improved since, since this FA Cup run. They've had one defeat in 11 games, so that, you know, that says it all uh, with, with these games giving them confidence. So I think uh, the form that they're in, they can certainly uh, hope to progress. But I was talking to manager Tom Wade in the week and, you know, I think he'll be playing down the game to his players. He's got a young uh, squad there. And I think they'll all be excited by the occasion, but we'll need to make sure they keep their feet on the ground and just play their normal game against Altrincham. And also another little helping hand for Blythe is they were supposed to be playing at home tonight in the Cup and the league have given them special dispensation to, uh, to call off that game, whereas Altrincham will be playing against Lincoln. Is that going to give them the edge in terms of fitness? Well, they'd hope so. I think, you know, secretly they'll be hoping Altrincham get a few injuries, maybe a few knocks in that game. Whether uh, it's yet to be seen whether Auchin are going to play their full strength side, I presume they will against uh, Blythe and probably against Lincoln tonight as well. They're in a st sticky position themselves in the league. Uh, but as you say, the, the league giving Blythe a, a night off tonight is uh, you know a big positive for them. I think they can get their players rested up. They've been using their whole squad in recent weeks, and uh, you know they'll really be fresh for the FA Cup on Sunday. Now on to the Northern League, and we'll start with Jarrah Rufin who took on a Newton Aycliffe side looking to continue their good form. Jack Spedding reports. Jarrah Roofing travelled to Newton Aycliffe for the latest round of the EBAC Northern League Division 1. The Roofers, who were unbeaten in their last 10 games, had an early chance to seize the initiative. Carl McCann was put through one-on-one, -on -one, but could only dribble into the Newton goalkeeper. 
Despite their dominance, Jarrow conceded a dubious penalty. What looked like a regulation goal kick turned to a spot kick as the linesman flagged, much to the disbelief of the visiting players. Stuart Banks made no mistake. The roofing continued to dominate and were handed a second clear opportunity. This time, Louis Teasdale was played through, but hesitated in front of goal and placed a shot straight at Barry Poskett. In the second half of little action, Newton Aycliffe were denied as Greenan made a smart stop from a free kick. And despite their pressure, roofing left empty handed. So, as we just saw, it was a tough afternoon for Jarrow, first loss in 11. Uh, possibly didn't get the rubber the green with the decisions, but they have been in good form lately and they're looking good in the league, aren't they, Matt? They have, yeah, and uh, they're in seven, seventh in the division at the moment. They've got some uh, games in hand on the teams above them as well. So, as you say, yeah, they're looking good. I think it's their home form that's propelled them to that position. They've got six wins from ten at home. And, uh, you know, the away form is probably the one they need to concentrate on. They've only won two, I think, of their five games away from home, as we saw in New Naycliffe for the weekend. So if they can get their away form going, I think, you know, that could be a really good season for Jarrah Roofing this year. Elsewhere, North Shields were in FA Vars action on Saturday against Emley. North Shields welcomed AFC Emley in the FA Vars at the Darren Person Stadium. The home side started the game on top and took the lead when Denver Morris squared the ball to Dean Holmes, who slotted into an empty net. Emily equalised soon after. Alex Hallam scrambled the ball through to the on-rushing Jordan Townend, who finished neatly past Shields keeper Chris Bannon. It remained level until the 54th minute. A routine long ball was miscued by centre-half Sam Jerome, which allowed Gareth Bainbridge to run in unopposed and the prolific striker made no mistake. But Jerome atoned for his earlier mishap. He bundled the ball in nine minutes later after his initial header was blocked. Whether it crossed the line or not was questionable. However, the long ball was Emily's undoing once again. Another hopeful punt set James Lookup free who composed himself to give Shields the lead for the third time. Two minutes later, Bainbridge poked home his second and the team's fourth to firmly put his side in the driving seat. The striker shared the moment with one particularly excited fan. It could have been more for Shields, but Emily defender Ryan Brook made an excellent block after Ben Richardson rounded the keeper. This late goal mouse scramble was the closest that the visitors came to a third goal, with another clearance under the crossbar denying them a deserved consolation. Despite their best efforts, Emily couldn't overcome the side one tier above them in the non-league pyramid. North Shields continued their excellent form of late and faced a trip to Sunderland RCA in the second round of the FA Vars. As we've just seen, North Shields 4-2 win, great win there into the second round of the FA Vars and there are another local North East team that are doing really well in the league. Yeah, they are. They're even better than Jarrah Roofin there in fourth position at the moment in the league. And you like Jarrah Roofin, it's their home form that's put them there. They've, they've scored 16 goals at home and only conceded two. I mean, that's, that tells a tale and obviously a 4-2 win at the weekend as well. And I think the three losses they've had in their 15 games this season, you know, it just proves uh, that they will be a tough side to beat in this division. And, you know, people will do well to, to finish above them this year. And they're scoring lots of goals at the minute. They've got Gareth Bainbridge, who we saw scored twice at the weekend. He's scoring goals for fun. And Dean Holmes, who I believe had a little spell at Blythe as well. He did, yeah. And they've got goal scorers in that side. Uh, I think that you know that's one of the key reasons they're where they are in the league. And uh, if they can keep hold of them till the end of the season, they'll be in and around that area at the end. That's it for non-league corner this week. Join us next week, where we'll have a special feature from Blythe's FA Cup game. Thanks for tuning in to the first ever episode of The Press Box. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.